Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, in this episode, I'm building up to where we're going to start finally teaching how to actually edit. Uh, but one more thing here that, that's really important to know before you start editing is understanding window layout. Because as we start getting into editing, we're going to be getting into shortcuts, and a lot of shortcuts pertain to whatever window you were working within. And what I mean by windows are basically these areas right here. This here is considered a window right there. This is considered a window right here. This is considered a window right here, and this is considered a window right here. Those are four different windows. This is in the editing layout. So the first thing I'm going to show here, and this has been put in a di slightly different place since they went to uh, Premiere Pro, the official 2022 version, and that is this little button up in the top right-hand corner called Workspaces. If you hover over this, it brings up the title of Workspaces. So under Workspaces, if you pull this down, it'll have different workspace layouts uh, for different functionality. If you're working with effects, if you're working with color grading, working with audio, uh, graphics, etc., it's going to rearrange these windows uh, to optimize your, your experience in each one of these categories here. I've shown this in some previous tutorials, but I usually like to start in the assembly mode. Assembly mode basically narrows this down to three windows instead of four. Four is typically the standard, but this lays it down to three windows. There are actually four here, but now these windows are shared here. You've got your project area, you've got your program window, your source area, and then you have your timeline or sequence area down here at the bottom. But yeah, so it shares the same space for program and source area, and this way you have a lot more space over here to arrange uh, your media and import media and get everything organized. But usually once I start editing, I will go to the editing layout. So I'm going to go under our arrangements here and go to editing. Now the editing layout has these four different areas, your project area, your source monitor area, your timeline or sequence area, and your program area. One important shortcut that I want to go through is how to jump to different windows. You can simply use your mouse and move over these windows and click on them and you'll notice it puts this blue highlight around it, meaning that you are now operating within that window. So most of the shortcuts that you use are going to pertain to, uh, to that window. Uh, same as the timeline, same as the program window, so whatever you're doing, whatever window you're operating out of, you just be very conscious of which window is highlighted. Uh, the shortcut to jump through windows, if you don't want to use your mouse to jump through windows, is going to be Shift, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to hold down Shift with my, one of my fingers and I'm going to hit the, the number 1 at the top of the keyboard, Shift 1, and this is going to select your project window. Shift 2 will jump to your source window. Source 3 will jump to your edit window, and Shift 4 will jump to your program window. So if you want to quickly do some editing in your timeline, in, in your timeline, you could quickly jump to it by hitting Shift 3. Now I'm in my timeline, and say I want to go to the end of my timeline, I hit my end key on my keyboard, and it jumps to the end. And you can hit your arrows up and down, and it jumps through these clips here. If you hit your arrows up, it jumps to the left. If you hit your arrows down, it jumps to the right. So I will go through shortcuts I'll continue going through shortcuts. I'll have a special episode on just doing shortcuts and how you work with shortcuts or what they call hotkeys uh, coming up in the future. But let's talk about the nature of these, these window layouts here because you can customize these as well. Let's say you grab your timeline tab here and you can do, do this by grabbing tabs. Up here, this is a tab, this is a tab, this is a tab, this is a tab, and so on. All these are tabs. So you grab it by the name and you can actually move this. And it brings us, and when you move this timeline here, and keep in mind, let me shorten this, what you could do. What I like to do here is let's pretend like I've got two screens hooked up, uh, which I actually do, but uh, you can't see it because we're watching this on a single screen on YouTube. So let's say this is my uh, screen number one, and let's say I've got a secondary monitor, and let's say this space over here represents my secondary monitor uh, to, the, to the right. When I'm talking about a secondary monitor, people will oftentimes plug a second monitor into their computer and it will expand the desktop space. They usually do this through an HDMI cord or display cord or some other sort of other different type of cord or Thunderbolt cord uh, will give you a secondary display and that gives you uh, expanded real estate space. Here's one right here where you see a uh, desktop right here and then if you move your mouse over from one to the next, it's gonna move over to this window over here. And this really helps with editing because it gives you extra space, extra desktop space where you can have your windows kind of pulled apart and moved around and uh, let's show how to do that. So if you're using your secondary display as a secondary monitor, you can simply grab a tab here, like this tab, the edit tab here, and you grab it and you start dragging it over and it will disconnect it uh, from the rest of the program over to your secondary monitor. Now, if you move this over here, you can set it down like this on your secondary monitor and you go down to the bottom right hand corner and you can extend this you can extend this to fill up the screen just like that and now pretend like this is screen one I know that it's not but, the, but and this is screen two and then when you move your mouse over from one window to the next you can have a whole window to get dedicated to your timeline or to a program monitor or to your media tab or whatever you want uh, to have over on this side now if I want to restore this here and I want to get it all back to normal here I'm gonna to go to my workspaces here and right now keep in mind this is how it's remembering my 
edit layout right now. What I've done right here is going to remember it like this until I reset it. So I can go down and hit uh, workspaces and I'm going to go down to reset, reset to saved layout. And then it restores it back to the default setting for that space. Now let's say you want to uh, make a custom space and you want to remember that. Let's say that we just did that, that dual monitor layout where I dragged this, detached it, dragged it over to my secondary screen and expanded it. And let's say I like this layout and I want to keep it. You can save this as a different layout. You don't want this to be saved as your editing layout. In fact, I don't even think it lets you overwrite these permanently. If you hit this reset to save layout, it'll return it back to what it was originally. But I just make new ones for myself and rename them. So rather than reset to save layout and edit workspaces, I'm going to say save as new workspace. And now I can call this whatever I want to. I'm just going to call this custom dual screen. And when I hit OK, now that layout is going to be saved under here. If you go into our little drop down window here, go to workspaces, you're going to see that now you can see that custom dual screen that I just saved right there. If I want to get rid of these, I can go down to edit workspaces. I can select the one I just did and I can hit delete. And now that's gone and it's no longer uh, listed in there. And even if you are working on a single screen as well, you can rearrange these things to get it exactly how you like. Let's say you want to save a layout where you have all four windows open, but you want to have a little bit more room for your media. See, I can just pull this over right here, make more room for my media. Now I can see my media, my attributes in here. And I can even move this up a little bit. Let's say I don't mind a lot, a smaller window because I want more timeline space or something like that. Or I could even grab this one and drag it over. And let's say that's the way I like it. Uh, actually, let, let me show you one more thing as well. Before I save this uh, sp this workspace, let's show you something as well. You, you can even rearrange your windows here. Let's say I go to my effects tab, and I want my effects tab to be shared with the timeline for some reason. Uh, what you can do is grab that by the tab. You can drag it over and hover. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring open this, uh, this kind of purpler square in the middle here. And then it will bring these kind of wings on the side that's going to tell you where you are going to be saving these things here. Uh, or, or how you're going to be arranging these things here. So if I put it right here in the middle, look what it does. It makes two different tabs there uh, and puts them side by side. There's my timeline. There's my new effects tab that I just put there. But if we grab this, detach it, and we put it over to the left, up, down, and right uh, on these things here, it'll position them side by side. Look at this. So now I'll put the effects side by side, put my edit timeline here and my effects tab right there. If I drag this back, put it in the middle, now I have to kind of regain that space there. Uh, let's see if we put this on... If we put this on top, grab this tab, detach it, and put it right there, it's going to have this on top. And if you put it on the bottom, it'll have it on the bottom, and so on. So you can really customize these the way you like it. And once you get them customized, of course, you can go under our little workspaces here. And I can say, save as new workspace. I name it, and it will be saved there for, the for future use. And once again, you can go through and arrange for color. This is for color grading. This is for sound mixing and so on. It's got a whole bunch of different arrangements it's, that, like I said, optimizes the space for a very specific use. And some of these, I will get into these very specific functions. I'll get into color grading and sound mixing later on down the line as we get through all these kind of basic items here. But once again, I'm going to go up and go reset my editing workspace, reset to the saved layout. Now it's back to normal. And now I can use my Shift 1 to jump to my project window, Shift 2 to jump to my source window, Shift 3 to jump to my edit window, and Shift 4 to jump to my program window. Just quickly, last item here is I'm going to talk about what these different windows do and what they're used for. Shift 1, our project window. This window, and by the way, if you hover your, your mouse over any one of these windows and hit your tilde key, it's a squiggly t key above the tab key and to the left of, the, of your number 1 key, it will go full screen. It pulls that window full screen for you. And then if you hit tilde again, it t it flattens it back down to where it was. So if I move over the timeline, full screen, move over the program monitor, full screen, the source monitor, full screen, and my project window, full screen. But the project window is used for importing and organizing media. Uh, video, audio, JPEGs, graphics uh, will all be contained in this project window to access and to edit. Your source monitor is basically used as a clip viewer and deciding in and out points. We're going to get into this in the next episode when we start getting into editing. So if you open up a clip here, double click on a clip, it will load it, load it into the source monitor. You can grab your playhead and you can skim through this here. And here is that clip that I'm just previewing. This is not what I've edited yet, but you can do an endpoint, I for endpoint, O for out point, and then you can grab it and drag that down into your timeline. And now it's got the end point and out point there. I will go through that when we go through the editing next time. But your source minute monitor is used for viewing individual clips and also for setting in and out points. Shift three, we'll jump down to the timeline. Shift three, this is your sequence or your timeline down here. I have a, basically a sequence of clips in this timeline, and uh, these are the edits here, and this is what's making our movie. And then shift four, we jump up to the program monitor. This is your program monitor. This is showing 
what's in your timeline, and it shows exact, the exact frame where your playhead is positioned. You can see the individual edits here as, as we're playing through this. It cuts from shot to shot to shot, uh, and by grabbing this playhead and skimming through it, this is showing your, your edit, the, the progression on your editing your movie right here. So this is your edited movie, and then this is showing what your edited mov movie looks like in your program monitor. All right, so those are the basics on the, your window layouts. And in the next episode, I'm going to be covering uh, shortcuts, hotkeys, and then after that, we will finally be getting into editing.